In this course, IPHS 403, you were charged with this scenario. You were recently appointed administrator of a public health organization, and your governing body charges you to assess the capacity and improve the performance of the organization in order to achieve full accreditation within three years. You have 100 days to produce a credible plan to achieve this goal. And throughout the semester, you've been adding tools to your toolkit. This week, you will focus on a SWOT analysis for strategic planning and how to develop a public health business plan. I know you're thinking, business plan? Isn't business plan only for profit and industry? No, business plan is a concept of thinking about how to reach your audience by selling your program so you have buy-in. So what would be the product in a public health organization? It could be the program, the services, the intervention, the public health campaign. All of these are services and products that you want to sell to your consumers or you can think of it as your community and for them to buy but to buy into your cause. So let's apply the business plan approach to nonprofit organization in public health organizations. In the second case study, which focuses on Rhododendron County Health Department, it was facing a challenging time in trying to balance the need for change and a focus on population-based services with financial and political reality of public health on the local level. Over the past several decades, the population was also growing and it was having some challenges in meeting these needs. You will be reviewing the population demographic about this particular county and some history in terms of the administration, the personal health services that were being provided, the environmental health services, the impact of the stakeholders that were involved, the Board of Health, and some of the plans that were in place, such as the Public Health Improvement Plan, how the community was involved. And you'll go back in time to look at what happened in 2010 in October. Um, what were some of the recommendations and how did the community get involved? It is important to revisit the mission statement and the vision statement of an organization. This will help you in designing your SWOT analysis, your strategic planning, and your business planning. The mission of the organization is to protect the public health across a lifespan through prevention, education, partnership, and healthy environment. The vision is healthy people, thriving community. The purpose of having a strong mission statement is that it will help guide you in designing programs, services, products, public health campaigns that will help drive the mission of the organization through business planning. Are the consumers, the community, buying into these programs? Are they improving their health through your campaigns, through your missions, through your programs? And if so, then you are doing strategically fine. If not, then you want to revisit your strategic plan to identify what were some strengths, some weaknesses of your plan, and where are opportunities that can help strengthen your strengths and threats that are impacting the strength of your organization. So that is why a SWOT analysis, strategic planning, and business planning all come together as very important components in driving and thriving an organization's mission. You will conduct a SWOT analysis, a SWOT analysis, where you identify five strengths, five weaknesses, five opportunities, five threats or challenges. And with your group, you would then extract five strategic issues from the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, and challenges that you identified. Now that you have the end in mind what you need to do, let's go over the steps in conducting a SWOT analysis. First, organize the data and information into these categories, into these quadrants. The strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Then identify any connections between the items that you listed in one category. Is this um, item that you put into the strength, is this truly a strength or is it an opportunity? The way to identify whether something is a strength or opportunity is, is this an internal factor? An internal factor is the strength and weaknesses of an organization that you have control. 
external forces such as opportunities and threat are beyond the control of the organization, but yet has an impact on the mission and vision of your organization. So opportunities are either there or not there, or you can think of it as these threats that are pending or they do exist. And these are all external to the organization. Third, look for any patterns in the results where you put the items and the strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Then discuss ways the strength can be implemented, can be maintained, or leveraged. And discuss ways to minimize your weaknesses that you identify because these are internal forces that you have control as a part of your organization. Um, six is discuss options for leveraging and taking advantage of the opportunities and discuss the potential impact of threats and challenges and anything being done to address or prepare for the threats. Again, the opportunities and threats or challenges are external to your organization. So it is important to project whether these exist so that your organization can be prepared, um, whether there's an opportunity that is pending and so you know and, you, and you're more mindful of it and then you know um, you're prepared. Now, if there's a threat, it wouldn't become a surprise to your organization because you already planned that these could be challenges. And eighth is to identify five potential strategic issues that the health department may need to address. Now, by combining all this information that you obtain from your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, you can then identify what are key issues that you can um, focus on um, as an organization team uh, that's driving uh, in accomplishing the mission of your organization. So your next question is probably, well, what is a strategic issue? Well, strategic issues are fundamental policy questions or critical challenges that must be addressed in order for an organization to achieve its vision. So remember to revisit that mission statement of every organization that you're ever going to work at. But in this case, um, we're going to look at this specific county. There are three types of strategic issues. First type is those which no action is required at the present, but which must be monitored. Those that are coming up on the horizon and are likely to require some action in the future and perhaps some action now. And third is those that require an immediate response, like if there's a crisis or emergency that's happening. So use this chart to help you guide your thinking. Um, in this quadrant, you see there's strengths and weaknesses. Um, which is on the left side, and you see the word internal because these are internal forces. And on the right side is opportunities and threats, which are external forces. And by listing the items that you're going to come up um, from your brainstorming session with your team, you will be able to pick out at least, hopefully at least, five different uh, strategic issues that you want to focus as a team. And this is going to become very important that you identify what could be at least five issues because the second part of the toolkit is that you're going to design a business plan um, to address one of these issues. So in the meanwhile, let's just um, have some fun and identify what are some strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And then from that, identify five key issues. The second part of this module is focusing on performance management. And this is a very important tool um, to have, regardless if you are working for someone and you're thinking, I'm an employee, I don't need to know about performance ma management. But it's important for you to have some self-assessment of how are you performing in the organization? Are you achieving your own personal and professional goals? And so using this public health performance ma management system is a great way to see how the organization is performing and how you as an individual are performing at, uh, in relation to the mission of the organization. So there are four key categories in the public health performance management system um, that you want to uh, be aware of. And so they are per the performance standard, the performance measurement, the reporting progress, and the quality improvement. And if you notice that these four quadrants is all encompassed with these five different um, dimensions of performance management. So the first one is the visual leadership, um, is having transparency, a strategic alignment with the mission and what the organization is doing, and having culture of quality, and two, 
and to have a customer focus. Now, in this case, you might be thinking, well, I'm not really selling anything to anyone, but you're selling your public health campaign, your idea, whether it's um, no gun violence or promoting um, healthy eating habits. These are ideas that you are selling to the community. So your community members are like consumers. So you have to think of it in that way. And so that's why in the second half of this module, we're going to talk about business planning. So we're going to have you put on a business thinking hat. And I know a lot of public health students are a little bit uncomfortable, you know, putting on this hat because it's, oh, it seems very, you know, for profit. It's in you know, an industry and it's all about money. When, if you want to run a successful nonprofit organization to thrive and sustain under all conditions, even in challenging economy such as now you need to think like a business person and so we're going to think about how do we combine our passion in driving change in a healthy community while putting a very savvy business hat and this is where I'm going to teach you um, at the second half of this um, lecture so there's a lot of ways to run an organization and to plan and evaluate but one of the very useful tool in organizing any program is logic modeling and you can think of it in these four different phases which is to plan do study and act and we will go over in quite a detail um, how to apply logic modeling and this is probably something you, that you we've already gone through in terms of program evaluation in this course or also in your other courses um, but we'll also see how logic modeling is a way to funnel information um, to develop your strategic plan and a business plan so let's revisit um, how to define performance measures with logic model. So if you see here, the logic model is on the far right, which is described in terms of the inputs, activities, outputs, and outcomes of impact. Um, but in the first part of the, uh, of the slide you see on the left side is the situation analysis and priority setting. So this is where it is very important to identify the problem that you want to solve and what are measurements to see, to see whether this pr problem was addressed. And if it's not addressed, how can we um, figure out what components of the problem that we could dive more in? Or is it the outcome of the problem that we're assessing that's not a direct measurement of whether we did make progress or not? So these are very important tools to assess why program evaluation is important, but it has to also align with what is the performance measurement. Because if your measurements are inaccurate, you're not, you might not be measuring to the, the appropriate performance. And, and perhaps your measurements are correct. Maybe the performance um, that you had laid out is not the most effective one um, to achieve those types of outcomes. So we'll talk about how to modify some of these um, matrix um, to assess so it's more effectively. So here's an example of an organization system. And you can see how the programs and units are all linked together as a system and how it all comes together across an organization. So if you notice here on the far left is there's different departments and each department may have different outputs and all these different outputs um, will yield a certain type of short, middle, midterm, and long-term outcome. And all of this is supposed to drive um, activities to meet the mission statement of your organization. Now, you could think of it that each unit by itself is acting as a system, and each mini system um, comes together to become this larger system. So you could think of it as maybe the organization one is a single organization, and if you look at organization one and two, this would be considered a multi-organization partnership. And if you look at all these different organizations, how they all individually um, have their own outputs and outcomes um, to meet their own personal um, organization mission, but they all come together to meet a common goal to drive a healthy community. So in tool in, in the workshop too, the toolkit is to teach you how to do a business plan. So I, again, I'm going to say like, oh, business planning sounds very busy, very like a business line, very corporate. I'm not really interested in that. I'm telling you, I have given tons of different invited workshops to directors of different types of units. And they're very, very passionate about their public health goals and they want to really reach out to the community. But sometimes your vision of how community uh, you want to see, you know, thrive may not come to light because there's no um, way to keep the program sustainable. 
you know, if your if your organization is very dependent on certain grants and certain type of funds, and if it just happens to be a very bad year, how are you going to keep these programs running? So it's so important to think about how to finance your mission. And this is where business savviness will come in. And so I'm going to teach you about the purpose of business planning. And here are some common reasons why to do business planning. A business plan is a written document that summarizes the analysis behind the development of our product, service, and programs. And it could be based on a wide range of criteria for consideration. Now, for here in public health, you know, you might want to think about, okay, products that are aligning with our public health ethics, um, that it's available for everyone. Maybe it's going to be low cost, or maybe it could be, um, there could be different price range for individuals who are low income, or, or maybe um, students or either are unemployed. So these are ways that you can drive your service and products to match and align with your, your own organization ethics. So this is a very key point, and I want to really drive this home, is that in contrast to the programs and process theory diagrams and logic models that we've discussed, a business plan is written documents are meant to convince right, is to convince your stakeholder why this nonprofit organization needs to exist, why the community, your consumers need this service, product, or program, right, and that it is to incorporate the revenue, the budget, and sustainability of this program or the service and, and or this um, new uh, public health campaign. So the business plan is to convince your stakeholders, which could be your funders, or it could be the grant administrator, or it could be even the, um, the local government um, who's supporting, or maybe there's um, ways to subsidize your program. So they need to have proof that your nonprofit um, needs to exist in this community. And by you having a strong well-written business plan that encompasses, you know, the public health issues that you are so passionate about, but also incorporating the, the important um, savviness um, of how this is going to be financially sustainable and viable is very important um, to your stakeholders. So it's putting two hats, right? You're putting your public health hat and your kind of busy savvy in this hat, all right? Now that I got you excited about business planning, watch your part two to this series and how, why business planning is important and the uh, seven steps in designing your business plan for public health. See you on Blackboard.